All right, welcome to the video on Ampere's Law and solenoids. Um, so Ampere's Law is sort of like Gauss's Law. Um, so just to remind you, uh, what we had before in chapter, I think it was 24, chapter 24, we had a statement about the surface area, surface integral of the electric field over an area. Uh, so we integrated over a Gaussian surface. Uh, we looked at all of the electric flux going through our Gaussian surface, and it turns out uh, we could just relate that to what was going on inside. Uh, we could relate that to the net charge inside the closed surface, the enclosed charge. So now what we're doing in chapter 29 is a similar sort of thing, a similar idea for magnetism. Um, with a couple of key differences. So I just want to point out some of these things. So first of all, we're going to integrate the magnetic field uh, over a length. So this previous one was a 2D surface. This Gaussian surface was a 2D surface that was a boundary of a three-dimensional space. Um, right here, what we're going to integrate over is we're integrating over a 1D curve, a uh, closed curve. URV. <laughs> so before we did a 2D closed surface, uh, and now we're doing a 1D closed curve, enclosing a two-dimensional space, right? If you have a loop of wire, say, that will have, that will, uh, if, it, if it's all in the same plane, that's, that uh, defines an open surface. So 1D closed curve, uh, the interior of which is a 2D space, whereas before it was a 2D closed surface, the interior of which was a 3D space. And instead of Gaussian surface, we call this an Amperian loop. Um, so Amperian loop for this. Uh, and it turns out that this integral, this line integral, uh, is, which is what your book talks about a little bit first before going over this, this formula. Um, this line integral is related to just the current that passes through the loop, so the enclosed current. ENC. So just like this was all the charge that was inside our three-dimensional space, this is all the current that's passing through our two-dimensional surface. Um, so yeah, that, that was just a quick intro. We'll, we'll, we'll say a little bit more about this when the book talks about it. So this is a line integral. Um, <clears throat> your book talks about this a little bit, um, just reminding you some facts about line integrals. So it's a dot product. So you, you take, you're integrating from some initial point to some final point. And it, from here, from this symbol right here, the close means that we're going to go back to our starting point. So you have some initial point, you go around and you go back to your final point, but you're still integrating along a certain direction along your curve. Um, so you have some starting point, some initial point and some final point, and you're integrating along that direction. So you split your line up into a bunch of little pieces. Uh, ds, and they're pointing along the direction that you're integrating. Right, so ds, and it has a certain direction. And independent of the curve that you're integrating along, there's a magnetic field that could be pointing in, could be pointing along with your direction, could be perpendicular to it, could be in some random, at some random angle to it. So if your magnetic field is always perpendicular to the direction that you're integrating along, this, this line integral is going to be zero. So you Every little piece ds is perpendicular to b. Uh, for every point, every uh, segment along this path, and so you'd just be summing up a bunch of zeros to get zero. Or if your magnetic field is always in the same direction as your line integral, then b dot ds is just the magnitude of b times the magnitude ds, and so it's the magnetic. So after you do the integral, this is the the magnetic field. Well, also what they're assuming here is that the magnetic field is constant, so you can take it out of the integral. In which case it's b dot delta s or just b times, sorry, not b times delta s, but it's b times the length of the line. So if the magnetic field is constant, you can just do magnetic field times the length of that line. That's what that simplifies to. Uh, Ampere's law. So uh, you can use this fact. So, so uh, normally Ampere's law is used, like normally you know this and then you use this fact to prove some things. Like you could, <clears throat> Sorry. Normally, you could use this fact to prove what the magnetic field is due to it 
current carrying wire. You use some symmetry to say the magnetic field is the same value at a certain radius around the wire. And you could very quickly say that, oh, B times 2 pi R is equal to mu dot I, and then divide both sides by 2 pi R and get the, the magnetic field due to an infinite wire. Your book is just trying to motivate this formula in the first place. And so they actually go the opposite way. They say, well, we already know the magnetic field from wire from doing from the integration from Beos of our law. Uh, so let's use that fact to look at this quantity, uh, closed line integral of B dot DS over this closed loop. And what you find out in doing this, so be, because the magnetic field drops off like one over R, where R is the radius of our Ampereian loop, uh, B drops off like one over R, but the circumference increases proportional to R. It turns out this line integral is independent of the radius of our loop. It just depends on how much current goes through our loop. And your book says we're not going to prove it, but this is uh, uh, this is true for any any closed uh, any closed loop surrounding it. So you could have some funny looking loop like this, and suppose you had a current of four amps that's going in, and there's a current of uh, seven amps that's coming out. All that would matter here is the four amps that's going into the loop. Um, so here you could totally disregard this because it's outside your loop. And so if you were integrating, if you wanted to calculate this quantity for this loop, well, the uh, this is equal to mu naught times the enclosed charge. So the magnitude of so the magnitude of this thing will be this constant times four amps for the enclosed current. Um, the only sort of tough part is whether this is quantity is positive or negative. Um, so the so you'll notice that the the like for this particular example of, for the four amps, the magnetic field is actually curling around this wire like this. Um, the circulation, the, the the direction that the magnetic field is circling around that loop is actually opposite the direction of the line integral. So the the direction that we chose to go around that line integral. So actually, this uh, this answer right here would be mu naught. It would actually be negative. So minus four amps, because the direction of integration is uh, corresponds to the direction coming out of the screen. Right? Take your right hand, have your fingers go around the direction that you're integrating around the loop. So in this case, it would be counterclockwise. If you do that, your thumb points out of the screen towards you, whereas this four amps is actually going into the screen opposite that direction. So the this this line integral would actually give you a negative quantity. So the statement is called Ampere's law. And actually this is like, if you had to sum up all of our class into four equations, this is one of them. You can actually get what the magnetic field is of an infinite wire from this formula. Um, Bios of our law contains a lot of the same info. Um, and this one requires being a little clever and, and doing some tricks, which is why your book de-emphasizes it. But in later classes, we, we really like this one better. Uh, rather than the Beatles. <clears throat> okay, so uh, your, your book does an example problem uh, where you have a current carrying wire of constant J. So, so your book doesn't say this from the start, but they're assuming that the, con the current in the wire is spread out evenly over the area, over the cross-sectional area. So J is constant and equal to I divided by pi times capital R squared. So for that particular problem, the magnetic field increases up until you get to the to the end point of the wire, and then it just drops off like one over R, just as if all that current were just squished to the central axis. So very similar to like, if you remember the the, the uh, problem in with Gauss's law and electrostatics of if you had a uniformly charged sphere with the charge on the in, in the interior as well. Uh, the electric field increases linearly up until you get to the edge, and then it drops off like 1 over r squared is normal. But here it's 1 over r for the outside for magnetic field. So notice like when the r doubles, the magnetic field goes to half of the value. Uh, one of the nicest applications of Ampere's law is to prove what the magnetic field is of a solenoid. Now, a solenoid is going to be an object that we keep coming back to in magnetism, much like we kept coming back to a capacitor for electric fields. So one nice thing about a capacitor with equal and opposite charges was that it, it had a uniform magnetic, sorry, uniform electric field inside it. The nice thing about a solenoid 
but it has a uniform magnetic field inside it. So solenoid is a coil. It's a, it's a coil of wire containing a current in it. And this produces a magnetic field along the symmetry axis of the coil. So you'll notice here you have the, the coils wrapping around here. And the magnetic field is inside the, the wire here and approximately uh, constant in both magnitude and direction. And then big, it's almost zero on the outside. So it's about zero on the outside, and it has some value on the inside that we can actually calculate uh, or using Ampere's law and the fact that it's constant. Um, so uh, some info about this. Uh, so this, this is like repeating what I said, but you, sh you should probably read this to get familiar with this because these solenoids aren't going away and they'll, they'll play, play a key role in the next chapter as well. Um, <clears throat> so this is a picture where we, it, it's, it's, we have the complete coil, but we just sliced it so that we can see the directions here more clearly. So the, main, the currents are coming out right here and they're going into the page right here on the bottom. So this is help us, to help us see the direction. So the current's coming out. So from the top to the bottom, to the top to the bottom, the current's coming out, going in, coming out, going in. If you take your right hand and you were to follow that those current directions, notice how like your right hand is following along with the current, your, your fingers are following along with the current, and then your thumb would be pointing to the right. Um, so that's how you can tell whether, you know, that you'll always know that for a solenoid, the magnetic field is going to be good parallel to the symmetry axis, but and you just have to figure out which of the two directions. So the right hand will, will tell you which of those two you should choose. So to actually calculate the value of the magnetic field, we have an Amperian loop that we choose to be a rectangle of length L. That's Some of it is on the inside and some of it's on the outside. So for this line integral, there's zero contribution here, zero contribution here, zero contribution here. So on the outside, it's because of the magnetic field zero. Here, it's because the magnetic field is perpendicular to the direction of ds everywhere along those legs. And the only non-zero contribution to uh, contribution to integral would be dot ds. The only non-zero contribution is there. So the left-hand side, or sorry, the, so in this formula, the B times L is actually evaluating the integral. That's, that's just doing that. And then the right-hand side of, uh, of Ampere's law is mu naught times the enclosed current. So then we have to look for, the, for what's written, what's in red right here. We have to look at, well, how much current is inside is going through our rectangle. And uh, a solenoid is, is defined by its uh, number of turns per unit length. So lowercase n is number of turns per unit length um, So the total number of turns here, so this means the total, in other words, how many times does the uh, does the current pierce through our rectangle right here? So the capital N would be the number of turns per unit length, which is some constant for your solenoid times the length of your loop. And that lowercase l is going to cancel uh, with the l from uh, from Ampere's law. Um, so actually, this this formula is missing. Oh yeah, okay, there it is. Um, so they, they approached it a little bit, like they didn't define the lowercase n until the end, but uh, it winds up being the same thing here. So the overall result is that the magnetic field of a solenoid is this quantity right here, mu naught i times lowercase n, number of turns per unit length, uh, which we use, which we proved with Ampere's law. And this is just emphasizing that a solenoid has, you know, basically acts like a bar magnet as well. Uh, all right. So for this example, this is just um, making sure we understand Ampere's law. So this isn't this doesn't have to do with solenoids. This has to do with a closed loop and then currents going through the loop. Um, here it looks like so. Okay, so uh, the loop given. So for the integral of b dot dl, 
uh, with integrating. Looks like we've cho we've chosen the uh, clockwise direction to integrate around here. So integrating clockwise. This means so take your right hand and have your fingers go around in the clockwise direction. Follow along the loop in the clockwise direction. Which direction does your thumb point in that, in that case? Should be, you should have gotten that your thumb points into the screen. So that means any current that's into the screen will count positive. Currents into the screen are positive. So, in other words, when we use Ampere's law, the integral of b dot dl, the closed line integral of the integral of, of b dot dl is mu naught i enclosed. So we have to add up all the currents that are going through our loop, where currents that are going into the screen are positive. So the six amp one is positive, but then the two amp one is actually coming out of the screen. So that would be negative. So it looks like the, to the total value of this circulation is four amps times mu naught. That would be the value of the line integral. So just like what we learned with uh, Gauss's law, Ampere's law is always true, but only sometimes is it useful. So for this particular problem, this result doesn't tell us what the magnetic field is here versus here versus here at any point along there. It just tells us, it gives us an overall summary of what the magnetic field is doing around that loop. Okay. All right. 